Hey everyone, this is my latest cargo ship. I had hoped this would be a one evening build, but it was a little bit trickier than expected, as usual. And so it went to two evenings. This is a dry bulk carrier, gearless, obviously. And it has just a little bit of detail in the interior of the, the wheelhouse. So there's an actual bridge in there. Did something a little bit different with the, the doors to get a minimal space for the the doors to actually fit there so they can open, but uh, they don't fully, fully come in flush right up to that edge, but it's it's pretty close. It doesn't look too bad from most distances, but I did want to get actual openable doors in there so that I could have some suggestion of the crew being able to get in and out of the, the bridge level up there. And the hatches definitely took the longest amount of time for me to design. I tried several different types of designs for that to get them to actually open. They are folding hatches, so they go like this and they come right together uh, so they can stand pretty much vertical. If you open up both of them at the same time, because of how close they are together, they have to be just a little bit off vertical, but they are able to fold up together. Uh, these hatches are built with studs on both sides construction, so the bricks here are facing towards you, the bricks over here are facing away from you. And the trickiest thing about that ultimately with the solution I came up with was actually uh, setting up what they are attached to down here. So that had to be offset on the, the two horizontal planes by a half stud each where these get attached. Uh, for each one, one of the hinges is, is half stud off. One of them is aligned with the rest of the studs on the hull. And then I had to also raise this up just ever so slightly. I made a mistake when I posted about it on Instagram. I said up a third. It's actually up one sixth or one half of the height of a, of a plate. And I did that with some, again, studs on the side, both sides, other side, just funky, weird <laughs> building to make that happen. But it opens up to cargo holds, which are deeper than they were by default, because they actually raise up above the, the default deck that comes with this unitary hull. And then I defeated that because uh, it doesn't make sense to fill that up with thousands of these these uh, one by one pieces that here are representing some of the pellets that are raw material to make coffee mugs. So those will be delivered to the Octan factory. It doesn't make sense just for the sake of display to buy another thousand of those or so. So there's just a plate under here <laughs> just to, to fake it out just a little bit. So it takes up the amount of space and it looks completely full and it does the trick. I really like how these hatches work. I like how they look. It's something different for me. Oh yeah, I used that snap piece already, one of those that I got in a, just a very recent haul. So yeah, it's good to, to use some weird different shapes from time to time. Got that forward mast again, just uh, knocked it out of place a little bit. Has a couple of lights facing towards the, the hold area. Got some lights up here facing towards the front. Got a little bit of safety gear. Originally when I built it, the doors were able to open, but then I changed out some pieces to make them look what I thought was was better to look at. It's it's all just really cramped how to, to get everything to fit into the space. Everything had to be reduced down. So not the best look for the lower doors. This was also an interesting challenge that just, it wasn't too tricky, it wasn't too difficult in the end to get the forward slope for the the front facing windows there, but it did require a number of iterations and a number of tries of different things to minimize the gaps around it to get it covered up without things sticking out too far, but it just barely fits. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze. I don't know if it's technically legal the way it is right now. This uh, one by eight tile right here is really just barely beneath the, the small uh, ridges on the tops of the, the hinges that I used, standard uh, one by two hinges that I used to move this whole sub-assembly here uh, forward, to angle it forward a little bit. But up, up on the top, everything comes together pretty well. And then I got some more sensors and horns and 
you know, the usual stuff, antennae and stuff up here. The, uh, the smokestack was something that I had actually started building some months ago, the first time that I was trying a build on the second largest hull on which I, I placed my second uh, cargo ship. But at that time, I wasn't able to complete the cargo ship that I was trying to do at that, at, at, at that initial, initial time, the, the very first time trying to use that hull. So I left this behind and now I was able to use it. So that was good. Just has a little bit of a, almost an airfoil, double airfoil uh, cross section to it. Just something again, a little bit different. But in the end, it's pretty straightforward and I think it looks like what it's supposed to be. And that's the most important thing to me. The only problem now is that there is, I think too much green over on this particular pier in the, the port between the, the large hull and the legs of the crane and the temporary cargo that I have there right now. And look at that, <laughs> got the, the green uh, locomotives coming by. It's not part of the problem, but uh, funny little coincidence there. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely considering changing out the colors of these legs now. I don't have all of the colors that they've made of the, the crane legs uh, obviously of that type. Obviously this is an incomplete thing that still needs to be built, but uh, I'll I may change that out. I might keep it the same, but I may change it out. I'll have to just go through the different colors that I have again and see if there's something that I prefer for that. Like I said, I might just end up leaving it like this. We'll just have to see how that turns out. Uh, comment that I've gotten with some frequency re recently as I've been working on some ships over here and working in the harbor more than, than before is uh, why I'm using the unitary hulls and why I don't take on the challenge of building you know, custom hulls with just bricks, with just pieces. And first of all, as I look over at this, I have done custom hull boats before and this one has all sorts of studs on all sides, construction tricks used to make that specific bow shape. I also did a little sailboat over here. I don't know if that really counts towards that, but I do it, I've, I've done it, I will do more in the future. But the main reason that I have done a few now, just a few, it's not that, that many really, right? Uh, of these ships with the, the unitary hulls, the preformed hulls, is that I like them and I want to. So that's, if that's really a bit about it, it's that simple. I have liked them since I first had this particular set as a kid. I've liked them since before then when I had a, a catalog that showed the Fireboat and I think one other from the late 1970s that used the same modular hull system. I just really like things. I like the shapes. I like the idea of them and I have bought a bunch of them. I have a whole box of different ones. I have kind of collected them and I want to use them. You know, I want to put them actually to use. There's also a big misconception about Lego unitary, uh, unitary hulls. The idea that if you just use one of these rather than making your own, it's kind of like being lazy. It's taking the easy way out. Uh, I find that to be, in my experience so far, to be exactly the opposite of the truth. These things are super restrictive to work with because, just grab one that I've got on the desk over here. Oh yeah, this is the exact same shape as that just a, a different color. When you get one of these, you start using it, that's it. You get what you get. There's nothing here that can really be changed. I mean, these modern ones are at least more useful than they used to be, given that they have plates on top. So you can at least extend the deck. Like with this, I was able to bring the, the rails out beyond the width of the, of, the, of, the, of the ship itself, you know, the hull itself. But like with this one, you know, you don't have that option. The, the outer part of the hull goes up above the deck. So you guess you could build up inside of there and then extend out and you have this strange shape here. There are just so many restrictions. Taking this one as a perfect example, I wanted to put these containers down in the hulls so they wouldn't be sticking up so much, but I can't. I literally just can't without cutting a bunch of pieces. The insert inside of there, the gray piece, that forms the deck and the inner part of the hull that you can actually attach things to. Uh, it doesn't have room for you to build down in there. So I had to put my cargo up on top. 
I also wasn't able to lengthen the thing. I wasn't able to push the cargo forward. That's why I wasn't able to do a traditional rear superstructure on this. Well, one of the reasons I wasn't able to do a traditional rear superstructure, I could have halved the number of containers that I could carry with this, and then I could have made it work, but that would have sucked having just four containers on a ship. So here I had to come up with a completely different solution, go with a forward superstructure and have the cargo up higher than I wanted. All those restrictions because there's very little you can do with the unitary hull, especially the older ones. So I definitely find it to be much more difficult to build with these things, much more of a challenge to build with these things than to build with from scratch. From scratch, you can do whatever you want. You can change the shape of something, you can change the dimensions. This started out, I believe it was narrower and shorter, and to work kind of with some of the Lego math to create some of the shapes, the specific exact shapes that I wanted that would work with the exact you know, pieces that Lego has made. I had to change the dimensions a little bit and it all worked out. I was able to make enough room to to have this, this very shallow thing that kind of sits in the water and yet it has an engine room inside of there. There's detail inside here, detail up here. You know, everything just, just worked a lot, lot better, a lot more easily. With this, I had to, uh, some of the, the troubles actually that I had with creating the hatches and getting them to fit was because of the specific size and, and shape here. You know, I, I really would like to have lengthened this up, just a couple of studs to have more space. Uh, the superstructure, the wheelhouse, is not as large as I would have liked. It's not as wide. It's definitely not as as long as viewed from the side. But you know, you just have to work with that. I also would have preferred to waste less of the total the total length of the entire ship because I mean, some of it's kind of filled in here, but the the cargo hold really you know stops here. I would I would have preferred to use more of that have less of this kind of wasted deck space up front but when you're using these preformed hulls you just have to use what you've got and all the limitations that come with it can stop you completely from doing what you really want to do in some cases and in other cases they just require that you put a lot more work into it and really take on more of a challenge than building something from scratch you build one from scratch you can make it however you want whatever size you want like any alterations you want you just need to have the right number of the specialized pieces of slopes and such to make the bow shape especially the, uh, the stern not so much you know this is a little bit easier to do and not quite as important as having a nice looking bow but there are a number of different ways you can build these up either with the ship bow pieces or with completely customized building using specific shapes and sizes of slopes and curved slopes and of course then you also have to have those in the correct color it's not so much a, a challenge as just having the right pieces in the first place so i'm gonna make my next ship soon to go over here that one will have a red hull and it will be a brake bulk carrier maybe geared it might have a couple of, of actual uh, crane booms on it or maybe at least one i guess it's, it'll be kind of small but that'd be nice just to change things up one more time you know and have one more different type of ship over here and then it'll start to get a little bit crowded and maybe i'll be able to put yet another in here beyond that we'll see but definitely at least one more large unitary hull ship coming in to put in this space but for now this one is looking pretty good i think i like the space that it takes up i like the color scheme especially with the dark red and i just have to consider whether to change out the green there. I'm not gonna change the green on those guys, but I might change out the green on this, we'll see. That's it for this one, thanks for watching. I'm gonna keep working, I'll talk to you again soon.